Hello and welcome in. Good morning to all of you, or afternoon or evening out there in YouTube land. This is our Beauty from Ashes uh, Bible study. We're studying um, Lord Teach Me to Pray in 28 Days by Kay Arthur. And uh, we're, we're not moving very quickly. Uh, <laughs> and it doesn't really matter because we're just covering the subject matter. This is my sister, Ren, who's in the room. And uh, she says I have an annoying little sound uh, coming from my computer, which I can't help because I don't know what it is. Anyway, one day we will uh, study more of this technology and get better. But until uh, we get to that point, here's where we are. And really what we are just doing is we are recording these for your benefit and for the benefit of whoever may come along in the future, but more for our benefit as we study along together to keep us on track in our Christian life. And so uh, you're welcome in. And uh, if you are watching this, please do subscribe to the channel when, and uh, click the notifications bell because then you'll get notifications of when things are uploaded. And you never know what might show up. <laughs> but it's always going to be off the cuff and uh, totally unscripted, uh, except for the fact that we're following the books that we're following when we're studying. So anyway... Uh, we are studying about prayer. This week's lessons have been upon the kingdom of God. And so um, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to start out in prayer. And then uh, before the end of my prayer, we're going to pray the Lord's Prayer as we learned it in school together. Just to remind us. Let's pray. Oh, Father, we are so happy to come into this study room that this there is this little place where we can come and we can learn your word and learn to know you and learn to communicate with you better thank you lord that you gave Kay the inspiration for writing this study so many years ago so that we would not be in the dark about how to speak to you and how to approach you and we know that we do so boldly uh, because of Jesus, who is uh, interceding for us right now at your right hand. And we are so grateful that you gave us this free gift of our salvation through the sacrifice of his life on the cross for us. We're thankful that he paid the penalty so that we don't have to come hesitantly before you, but we can come as children. Uh, just skipping right into your throne room and say, Daddy, how you doing today? Or, Daddy, may we have this? Whatever it is that we come into your room for. And so, Father, as we're learning to use your model of prayer, which Jesus gave his disciples, I just pray that you would continue to give us discernment and wisdom and help us. Help us. We want to, we want to know you better and we want to hear from you in your word. And now we pray as Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. What's the next part? And forgive us our trespasses. I knew thought that was it, but my mind went away. <laughs> forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Sorry about that, everybody. I just had a, a truck went by, and my mind got distracted in the truck going by because it's garbage day here today, and I was thinking... Oh, no, I hope they can't hear that. And then my mind got totally discombobulated. So this is why, uh, you know, it's kind of good when you're going to pray to go away into some place where uh, the distractions are removed. <laughs> but we haven't got that luxury right now here. Okay, so uh, we left off um, on page uh, 68 and 69, I think, in the textbook. And what I want to do is I want to go through these scriptures uh, that are on page 69 again. So, Adrian, will you just read them right down the page? Okay. Mark 8, 34, 35. He summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, 
If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. Luke 14, 25, 27 to 27. Now large crowds were going along with him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother, and wife and children, and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Matthew 10, 37 to 39. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who has found his life will lose it. And he who has lost his life for my sake will find it. Matthew 6, 33. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. And so here, as you were reading it this time, I was thinking that I was thinking a couple of things. The thing I was thinking about first was people who are listening to this, who have not been studying God's word, um, might think that that's, um, those are pretty strong words that Jesus had to say about people, about how to follow him. And yeah. they, they might be thinking that Jesus is telling us to hate our families. Adrian. Yeah. Don't do that on camera. <laughs> anyway, um, it is, do you think that's what Jesus is talking about here? No. So what is it, what is it that he's trying to express here? That we have to put him first in every decision we make. It doesn't mean hate our families. It just means that God comes before our families. Yes. So it's it's a proper ordering of relationships. Now, in this world, uh, I know that people mistakenly say family first. and And personally, I have observed this. That, that there are certain women in particular who set their children up as idols. Oh, Every, my. Everything is about the children. Everything is about the children. And I'm not saying that protecting, training, and, you know, all of that, loving, nurturing your children is not a primary thing to do when they are under your roof, roof and they're little. Um, but what I am saying is that I do know people who have made their children their idol. And that, is, that, that, I think that is a terrible place. Uh, those little children grow up to be little mini emperors in this world. And they are, they're kind of, their hearts are, get hardened to find God. Because they are the emperor of their family. And we see all kinds of trouble that comes from this. And Jesus says, he's basically talking in all of these scriptures about allegiance and where our allegiance is to be. And the topic that we're studying here is, uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, if we go to now day eight, um, I hope you read page 71 because I'm not going to read the story that's there. Although all the people who should have this book, there are some very good um, narratives in here that you should read. But I want to go to the um, section on 72 that says furthering the kingdom of God. So I'm just going to read from the text. When you and I pray, thy kingdom come, your kingdom come, we are asking God to further his kingdom. Yes, to bring his visible rule upon the earth in days to come, and, but also to bring it to the hearts of mankind now, in these last days, days that began with the first coming of his son, as we see in Hebrews uh, chapter 1, verse 2, and which will eventually 
and which will end with his son's second coming. The gospel comes individually before it comes globally. The, I'm just going to say that again. The gospel comes individually to human hearts, mine, yours, yours out there in YouTube land, individually, person by person. But it is going to come globally. Okay, so uh, have you got your Bible with you? Yes, I do. So Matthew 24, we're going to start there, uh, and I'm just looking it up in mine. Uh, both Adrian and I have the New American Standard Study Bibles, and so that's the one we're reading from, right? Yes. In other studies, we're using the English Standard Version, uh, which I do not appreciate because it um, it does not capitalize the pronouns uh, referring to God, and and I find that to be disrespectful. The same with the NIV. It might be it might be easy to read, but it, it practices a certain amount of disrespect towards the deity of God. And that's just in grammar. And I don't support that kind of disrespect. Anyway, that's just my thing. Just I'm it's just because I was in a grammar. I was a had a grammar grammarian for a teacher. Okay, Matthew 24. And we're looking at verse 14. What does it say? This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. Okay, I, I think I studied this book because it's got a lot of markings in it. So what is the gospel of? The kingdom. Okay, what do you remember what gospel means? Isn't that about the Bible? <clears throat> the gospel is good news. Oh, I can never remember all of that. Good news. Good news. The good news of what? The kingdom. <clears throat> What's going to happen? Preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so the gospel is right now, and ever since Christ was on the earth, the gospel has been preached. Well, and even before that, because... Uh, the prophet Isaiah preached the gospel as well. And the gospel was given, <clears throat> good news of re a man's redemption was given in the book of Genesis to Adam and Eve. So I'm not just saying it was just preached. But in these last times, since Jesus, the gospel of the kingdom is being preached as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. So that's what's happening. Okay. So, the gospel of the kingdom, um, she suggests that we mark, when you're marking this, she marks the kingdom with a crown, and I always did too. Um, oh, I, I, know, I saw mine in the back of my Bible, and I marked it totally different. That's however you mark it. Hey, and you know you can change it in the back of your Bible if you want to change your marking. I've done that too. Uh, I have a gold pen that's shiny, like a, um, it's a liquid, not a lot of fountain pen, a roller pen. And so every time I find the gospel or the kingdom, I mark it in that shiny gold pen. Okay, so now what do we see in Matthew 24, <clears throat> verses 30? Verse 30. Um, yeah. And then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. Oh, my goodness. So this is the chapter, everyone, and Adrian. This is the chapter, uh, 24, when Jesus taught his disciples what is going to happen around the time of his coming. Again, now he's, he's, he's on the earth. They hadn't realized when they were there, they did not realize that he was going to be murdered. He was going to be hung as a criminal. They did not realize that. He knew. God knew. Uh, but they did not know. So that when he died, they were very dismayed. Because he told them all these things. And when you read the Gospels, you see that Christ told his disciples in advance what was going to happen. But they didn't get it. They couldn't get it. They didn't understand at all anything until after the resurrection. And then God sent the Holy Spirit to them, who he said he would send, 
who would bring to mind everything that he spoke to them. Excuse me just a minute. I have to get a sweater. I'm chilly up here. Hang on. Whew. Sorry about that. It was getting a little cold in here. Um, and it shouldn't be because the temperature is actually rising and the snow is melting. Yes, we had a freak snow. <clears throat> and so all the people who started their gardens blissfully early uh, were mistaken. All right. Uh, so back again to uh, 24 and verse 30. Yeah, is that what we were saying? So um, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky and all of the tribes on the earth will do what? Will mourn. Mourn. Oh my goodness, my color has changed again in this video and all of a sudden I look blue. <laughs> it's not because of cold. <laughs> it's my software playing tricks on me. Okay, um, okay, and the, the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man. How, what will they see the Son of Man? Coming on the clouds of the sky. Wow. With power and great glory. Excellent. Now read for me um, chapter 25 and verse uh, 31. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Keep, keep going. <laughs> and all the nations will be gathered before him. He will separate them from one, them one, from one another as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left, on the left. Good, good. So that, that this is Jesus teaching his disciples what's going to happen. Um, all right. So now uh, let's go to Revelation at the end of the story, the history, at the end of history. And go to chapter 14. All right. And so those of you who are watching here in um, YouTube land, we never encourage people to go hopping through the scriptures like this in the sense that, um, you know, hop through and find this verse and hop through and find that verse. Um, I just wanted to point out to you, I didn't show you my book of Matthew, but I spent a lot of time studying in Revelations, <laughs> in the Revelation. So... Um, <clears throat> we're just looking at the topic right now. All right, Revelation 14, verses 6 to 7. Oh, I skipped you back too far. Revelation 14, 6 to 7. Go ahead. And I saw another angel flying in mid heaven, having an eternal gospel to preach to those who live on the earth and to every nation and tribe and tongue and people. And he said with a loud voice, fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heaven and the earth and sea and springs of water. Mm -hmm. And another angel, a second one, followed oh, that's, saying. That's, that's, that's verse 8. So we just want to do 6 and 7 for now. Oh, yeah. So, so this is John speaking, and he said, I saw another angel flying in mid-heaven, having, having what? An eternal gospel. So that is uh, eternal good news to preach to who? Every, to those who live on the earth. Mm -hmm. And who else? Every nation and tribe and tongue and people. Yes. And what did that angel say? Fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heaven and the earth and sea and springs of waters. So fear God and give him what? Glory. Why? Because the hour of his judgment has come. Do what else? Worship him. Who is he? Uh, who? He's the one who made the heaven and the earth and the spirit sea and springs of waters so you see this a john has has been caught up in a vision and he's seen this and he's seeing how the angel is worshiping here and instructing other people to worship now remember when we were um a few days back in in our study we were talking about 
uh, prayer begins with worship. So he is, the the angel is saying that judgment, the hour of God's judgment has come and that we are to worship the creator. Worship the creator, the maker. So so that's his prayer starting with worship. Okay. So so again, let's review this one more time. What does this passage say about the proclamation of the gospel? Is it just human beings that are that are sharing the gospel? No. Who is it? Angel. An angel flying in mid heaven. Okay, so mid heaven in 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 the highest place in heaven is where God is. And we're down on the earth. So in the mid heaven the angels proclaiming to everybody on earth to worship the creator. Excellent. Okay. So just reading here. Since the event described in this passage will occur someday, what is our responsibility today? Who is to declare the good news of the gospel until then? Us. Yes. And do you remember uh, Jesus' words as recorded in Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20? Read those that to me below there. Uh, Matthew 28? It is right below here. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is? Okay. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Okay, so um, we she asked us to double underline the verbs. So let's go through and, and uh, find the verbs in this. What's the first one? Go. Yes, and then what's the next one? Make. Make what? Disciples. Mm -hmm. Make disciples. And then what's the next verb? Uh, baptizing. Yes, good. And then what's the next verse? Teaching. Good. So she says, uh, and I don't have the Greek here, and I don't have my Greek New Testament thing here, so um, she says that all of those verbs are participles supporting the main verb in the Greek. So, the main verb is go. Go baptizing, go teaching, go making disciples. So, what's our task then as believers? To go make disciples. Yes, to go and do it. So, be, um, reading on the next page, 74, making disciples begins with sharing the gospel. And what is the gospel? Can you remember what we learned in our first week of study? If you don't, go back to 1 Corinthians 15. Okay, so let's just go there t so that all the people yeah, on YouTube. I went looking for it and I couldn't quickly find it. So okay, I didn't. Okay, so 1, Cor 1 Corinthians 15 is where it is. And because I studied 1 Corinthians, uh, I wrote it, I, it's marked up in my Bible, and I'm going to read to you. Now I make known, I'm starting at verse 1. Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preach to you, which also you received, in which also you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance... What I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, and then to the twelve. And after that, he appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time, most of whom remain until now, but some have fallen asleep. And then that. So, what is the proclamation? The proclamation is of the gospel, and 1 Corinthians 15 states clearly what the gospel is. So, what is it in verse 3? Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. Yes, and? 
that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day. Yes. To the yes. Good. And he appeared to Shephas and then to the twelve. Okay, so the, the 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 bit about appearing to Cephas in the twelve is not the part of the gospel, but it is the witnesses who were evidence to the resurrection. Right. And they and he states clearly that uh, most of them were still alive when he was writing this. So that's the testimony. Okay, good. So so God sent his son to die for our sins. He died, he rose, he was buried, and he rose again the third day. That is the good news. That's the gospel. Okay, so, uh, dead horse to the gospel. I'm reading on page 74 still. Just before Jesus ascended to heaven, his disciples asked him a question. <clears throat> and we're going to go back to the book of Acts, uh, chapter 1. I studied this book, too, quite a bit. Many, many, many weeks. Acts chapter 1. <clears throat> Acts chapter 1, verses 6 to 8. I want to make a point here. It's not because I studied all these things that makes me qualified to come and lead these classes. And uh, um, anyone would be qualified to lead a Bible study class who was called of God to do it, and who studied it. So it's not just me. <laughs> I just happened to have done so. Okay. Um, Acts chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. So um, read that for me, Adrian. Uh, 6 to 8. Uh, so when they had come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it at this time you are restoring the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know times or epochs which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest part of the earth. And after he had said these things, he was lifted up while they were looking on, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Okay, so that is the ascension of Christ to heaven. So, what were the questions that the disciples asked? Um, is it at this time you are restoring the kingdom to Israel? Yes, okay, so Jesus had been resurrected, and he had been meeting with them, and he presented himself to them, and he was speaking, at, in verse it says, to these all, he, verse 3, to these he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over a period of 40 days. So 40 days. And speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. Gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised. Which he said, you heard from me. Okay, so... Um, so the, the disciples were asking, is it now that the kingdom comes? And what was his answer? Um, give me a second, I lost. It is not for you to know times or epochs, which the Father has fixed by his own authority. Right. So, according to verse 8, what were the, uh, the uh, disciples to be then? Um, his witnesses, both in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the earth. And so, um, really, I mean, con compared to ancient, or we're calling ancient um, times, like like two thousand years ago, or better, when Jesus was saying this to them, we are living in the remotest part of the earth. Really, we are. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, what were um, so where, yes, yeah, so we already did that. So where? To the remotest part of the earth. So they were starting in Judea and spreading out to Samaria. And we know that Samaria has a certain significance in terms of the Jewish believers. And then to the remotest part of the earth. So we are learning in Romans, and we have learned in our study of part one, Romans for, um, chapters one through five, that Paul 
was originally a persecutor of the church whose name was Saul until he met Jesus in the road to Damascus and he went blind. He was blinded and then he became a disciple also. But um, after Jesus's resurrection, because Jesus appeared to him in a different way than than walking with the other disciples. And then God made him uh, um a preacher of the gospel to to other than Jews although we know from from uh, from his record that Paul himself was a, an extremely knowledgeable and well-educated Jew who persecuted the Christians in the early church okay so he uh, gave us left us with many letters to uh, to have preached the gospel to us in the remotest parts of the earth. And uh, now we have many translations of the Bible in many languages. And we also have our precept studies are being translated in more and more languages to help people grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so I'm reading from the text again. Jesus will restore the kingdom to Israel when he returns as king of kings and sits on David's throne. But until that time, the followers of Jesus Christ have a mission and commission. Why? Because men and women were born in sin and will perish if they don't receive the forgiveness of their sins by believing in Jesus Christ. Never forget that. There is salvation in no other. That I love that. Uh, I, every time I see this reference, Acts 4 and verse 12 which says, there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. Well, I learned a kid's song. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name, no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Yeah, And that's how we memorize this, the verse. <laughs> Okay, good. <laughs> and that was a little song and dance for you. <laughs> and Romans 10, which we are yet going to study, Adrian, makes it clear that people cannot believe in someone of whom they have never heard. That is why Paul saw himself as a debtor to the gospel. In Romans 1, 16, Oh dear, we memorized that verse. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the power of God, no, the righteousness of God, how does that go? For in it the righteousness of God is displayed from faith to faith. As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Did I get that all right? Just give me a second, I'm looking. Romans 1, 16 and 17. I'm going to read it now. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, faith as it is written, but the righteous shall live by faith. I think I got most of it when I was reciting it. You say it enough times and you've got it, right? <laughs> okay. Um, Paul wrote that the gospel is the power of God for salvation to all who believe, to the Jew first and then to the Greek, and that means everybody who's not a Jew. And we are debtors. Okay, so we're going on to the next segment of the book. Prayer is kingdom work. When we pray, your kingdom come, we are about kingdom work, getting the gospel to the lost. The kingdom cannot come until his body is complete, until the last of his sheep is brought into the fold, for he will not lose any one of his own. And that's what he said in John chapter 10. All right. Um, read to us what it says in 2 Peter verses three, uh, chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slow about his promise to return and set up his kingdom, as some count, was, as some count slowness. But is patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, for all to come to repentance. So what do we conclude from this passage? When you pray for the coming of his kingdom, you are hastening the coming of the day of God. The world is on God's heart and needs to be on our hearts as well. It's on your knees, precious one, that you make your commitment, bowing before him, 
honoring your father as your God and making yourself available as his ambassador wherever he sends you. It is on your knees that you water the soil of men's hearts through prayer so the ground is ready to receive the seed of his word. Would you get on your knees and simply say to God, Father, my allegiance is to you alone. May your kingdom come. And if you just said that along with me, you did. <laughs> Pray that. Okay. Um, here, is a, here, is, here is something from Adrian Rogers. A quote. No matter how faithfully you attend church, how generously you give, how circumspectly you walk, how eloquently you teach, or how beautifully you sing, if you are not endeavoring to bring people to Jesus Christ, you are not right with God. That's pretty sobering, isn't it? Here's a quote from A.B. Simpson, and the next segment is called, It's Time to Pray. The quote says, there is no ministry that will bring more power and blessing than the habit of believing definite and persistent prayer for the progress of Christ's kingdom, for the needs and work of his church, for his ministers and his servants, and especially for the evangelization of the world and the vast neglected myriads who know not how to pray for themselves. So our job is to be practicing all of this the first two indices that we learned was worship and the second is allegiance thy kingdom come all right so here is what we are practicing here and i started writing these things down uh, writing uh, a lot more in my journal than i had in previous days um, just because of this study Remembering that writing down our prayers, our thoughts towards God as we learn things, is our prayer. And um, so whether you write it or you speak it aloud or whether you sing, whatever. I have a friend, Dory, and she's singing to the Lord. She's taking his word and singing it back to him with her own tunes. And that's a beautiful thing, too. Um, but... It really helps to understand the, uh, a process. And I'm not saying to make something a process. We've all, oh, at one time or another, been in seminars when they say, first do this and then do this and then do this and then, you know. And sometimes that feels contrived. At least I find that anyway. So what we're going to do, here's what we're going to do, Ren. We are going to, uh, there are two prayers written down in the on page 77 and you're going to read the first one <clears throat> pray the first one by reading and i'm going to pray the second one by reading and then i'm going to end closing in in a closing prayer okay. and uh, before we do that though i'm just going to say i don't mind if you don't mind if we just do this day by day as we get together it's up Doesn't to you bother me Okay, uh, that just means we're not doing any homework. We're just doing it together, okay. right? That's fine. Because we have a lot of homework to do for our Roman study. So I'm not excusing us, everybody out there in YouTube land, but sometimes you got a lot of stuff, and you have to keep your house clean, and you have to look after yourself too, right? And you have to look after the other people around you. Um, so anyway, so uh, yeah, so we will come back on... This is Friday. I didn't even say that. It's Friday the 23rd, April 2021. And uh, we will come back on Monday. And we will uh, be in the book on page 79. And we will be looking at day 9. Sound good? Yep. So it's going to take us more than 28 days to get through this book. Because we are... Uh, we're not doing this on weekends. And we're not... And we're only doing this three times a week. So... Oh, well, <laughs> we've got nothing but time in lockdown. Okay. All right. So uh, you can go to prayer, please. Oh, Father, I thank you for loving me, for loving people so very much that you sent your very own son to earth to die for all mankind. Thank you, Jehovah Jireh, for providing Jesus as a sacrifice for my sins and for the sins of the whole world. Father, I know that I am to share this good news with others 
and that thought scares me. But if you will help me, if you'll open the doors of opportunity, I will walk through them. I want to be obedient. And Father, would you go before me by your spirit and prepare the hearts of the people with whom I share? I think especially of my neighbors, Lord. Their family is hurting so badly. Some of them are on the verge of divorce, and I know that's not your will. Show me how to help and encourage them. And some of them are having such difficult times with this lockdown. And uh, some of them might be starting to drink or, or, or practice other things. So, Father God, help me to be holding out a light in the darkness to them. Kindness with, with your grace and your mercy. And go before me as you do that to open their hearts and minds to Jesus, their salvation. Help me always to be thinking of your kingdom and how my, my actions might reflect upon your kingdom. Put a guard over my lips, put a watchman over my uh, mind and heart so that, um, that I understand the, the implications and don't, don't do things hastily or without thinking about it, or for, without asking you. And Father God, as we go into this weekend, uh, I'm just asking you, Lord, that you present many opportunities for witness, for sharing the hope that is in us. And I pray that you would give everyone listening to this broadcast here, all of us, I pray that you would give us a special blessing, and particularly upon those who are diligent to study your word. And uh, I just ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you guys. It's time for me to get to my housework. <laughs> okay, Adrian. So uh, have a great weekend. And uh, I'm just going to sign off for everybody here. We'll see you next time. Thanks for coming in.